at this event. Uh, I'm jealous on several accounts. I'm jealous of Roger's uh, sartorial splendor, as he described. <laughs> I'm uh, jealous of Michael's outfit because I have some Kenyan shirts I didn't bring with me today that I wish I would have now. And in hindsight, and I'm jealous of my new friend's of musical abilities. Amazing, amazing. You know, I did a little research for the day and then I found that Michael already had included uh, this section of Dr. King's uh, speech on the 100th anniversary. And mm -hmm. I just want to say to you, uh, I'll quickly share what I was pointing out, but I quite frankly think that these four main points that Dr. King articulated mm -hmm. are really the historical significance of the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, you probably know this, uh, if you don't, that today we're celebrating the preliminary uh, release of the Emancipation Proclamation. What uh, uh, President Lincoln did was really heroic and historic. He, uh, after the Battle of Antietam, he uh, essentially said, uh, I'm going to give you a 100-day notice of what's going to happen. So on September 22nd, 1862, he issued this, uh, what we could call the preliminary uh, Emancipation Proclamation, said, uh, said 100 days hence, the real deal is going to be signed. And on January 1st, 1863, he did sign the Emancipation Proclamation. My research, yeah. yes, that's, a, that's what we're talking about. That is absolutely what we're talking about. Did some research, several of you quoted this earlier, that uh, he actually proclaimed the freedom of 3.1 million of the approximately 4 million slaves in the U.S. at that time. But after January 1st, with the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, every advance of the Union troops meant the freedom of more people. In, in fact, uh, the proclamation announced the acceptance of uh, black men into the Union Army and Navy. And by the time the Civil War was finished, over 200,000 uh, black soldiers and sailors had fought for the Union and freedom. It was two years later, uh, with the passage of the 13th Amendment in 1865, when slavery was actually made illegal throughout the United States of America. Now again, as somebody who works with academic folks, I, I wanted to make sure I kind of framed these uh, discussions in a historical standpoint, so I uh, did some reflection on this and did some research, and, and I would just say that the issues that uh, were brought up through the Civil War brought into very sharp relief, substantive issues uh, for our day and for that day. At heart of the issue was whether the ennobling phrases of the Declaration of Independence where our forefathers declared that there were certain rights that were inalienable and that those rights granted to all mankind. The question was, would they apply to all mankind, uh, to all persons of color, to people without property, uh, and equally to men and women? Those were issues that were declared forcefully in the Declaration, but not lived out well in the early years of our nation's history. Uh, though, our federal, or though our founders were concerned about the overreach of a future federal authority, President Lincoln believed that he acted properly within the scope of his constitutional authority to preserve the Union. In fact, if I could just give a very quick commercial, at William Jessup University today, there's a fantastic exhibit on President Lincoln and the uh, constitutional issues raised during the Civil War. It's a fascinating study of the media of that time, North and South, what the constitutional issues were, and how President Lincoln stayed in the center of his constitutional authority. He was not exceeding his constitutional authority, but he declared very strongly that this was at the heart of the Union. The courage of one man against the significant tide of some sectors of public opinion brought about a change that was to be recognized uh, in years later as not only right, but fundamental. I was thinking about the great efforts of William Wilberforce, which 30 years earlier in England had established the pathway that would lead to the U.S. eventually rejecting uh, slavery. The idea that one person could make a difference that would affect literally millions for years to come. Today we gather and pay our respects and gratitude for the faith and fortitude of President Lincoln and those who stood for freedom. As a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm reminded of a text in Scripture where Jesus himself is described as the source of our peace. In Ephesians chapter 2, it says, He himself is our peace, talking about Jesus. He's made the two groups one. He's destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Follows, follows and says, His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in one body to reconcile both of them to God, the cross. He came and preached peace to you who are far away 
and peace to those who were near. And I was thinking about this, that some of us still feel far away. Some of us still feel near. Jesus himself is the one who is the source of our peace. He's called the Prince of Peace. And we who follow Jesus should be those who are speakers and encouragers of peace in our day. But I want to suggest something to you that might seem a little bit slanted here, and that is that I don't think at the heart of the matter that President Lincoln was motivated by constitutional principles. I believe he upheld them. I believe he acted within the center of constitutional principles, but I think there was something that was even more lasting and eternal than the powerful constitution we have in this nation. I think at the end of the day that President Lincoln was motivated by a biblical vision. I think President Lincoln, as a little boy growing up in Illinois, reading his books by candlelight, I think he had a vision. I think he could see a day for a new humanity that was not bounded by class or color, but by character. I think he could see the image of God imprinted on the human soul, that all human life was valuable, not just because we declared it such in the Declaration of Independence, but all human life was valuable, had certain inalienable rights, because those rights found their source and origin in our Creator, the image of God imprinted on the human soul. Lincoln was able to reach for a new reality that might be experienced in right relationship with Christ. Many years later, Dr. King, as you see so eloquently uh, written here on the inside of our document, he described elements of that same vision and history. And today, on this anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, I want to share part of that dream with you as well, a dream that finds its source in the pages of Scripture. What would it be like if we lived in an America where these words were true? Consequently, you're no longer foreigners and strangers, but you're fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. That section concludes with saying, you're being built together, become, become a dwelling which God lives by his spirit. It's my prayer that we find peace and freedom and hope in the celebration of documents like the Emancipation Proclamation. And I think all of us would say that uh, human history is littered with the failures of uh, fallible men and women. All of us in our own lives and our own stories would look and say, well, boy, I sure didn't live up to my ideals at that point in time. I sure chose wrongly here. I stepped off the path there. And we could certainly point to that in the lives of others. But I think we'd also point to certain moments in human experience, the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, Dr. King's speech uh, at the monument, I have a dream. We'd point to certain moments and we'd say there was an example where the human spirit was challenged, exhorted, and lifted up to a new place of opportunity. So today I, I join with you in celebrating peace and hope and freedom. And I do so through the document, the Emancipation Proclamation, and the courage of President Lincoln. I want to thank you for letting me share it here today. Thank you. Thank you. Fowler would say, can I have an amen? Amen. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Sir. The, 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 the dynamic trio. Uh, the, the three of y'all, we got every church in, in the...